Hi everybody, Dan Ullman, Matt Bernier. The Sunday DRF Bets race of the day is from Los Alamitos. Let's take a look at the field for the grade two. Buy a co a handicap for fillies and mares. $200,000 is the purse. You can access free formulator pass performances for this race at the race of the day page the event page on drf.com. We have a field of eight, Matt. Before we get going, I want to remind everybody of this, this wonderful deal we have. Boy, think about this. One year of free pass performances. It's a dream come true for many handicappers. All you have to do is sign up for DRF bets before December the 3rd. Wager $100 in your first 30 days. You get a full year of free PPs. Find out more, drf.com forward slash one. It's really a no-brainer, but you got to get in quick because it wraps up on Sunday. Peter erton has got two in here that have big chances yep. in the Bayacoa handicap. I'm expecting the two Champagne Room, the two-year-old Philly champion of 2016, to go off favored. She's had three starts in 2017, and to be perfectly honest, in two of those races, she didn't have much of a chance. Her 2017 debut, she caught the streaking unique bellow and that one was in raging form. She got beat 10 lengths. Last time in the Breeders' Cup distaff, she probably wouldn't have won anyway, but it didn't help that she was down on the dead rail. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this is a horse that, and you take those two races out, you're left with the Remington Park Oaks, where Good she put on a bit of a show. I thought she was much the best in there, not just because of the margin of victory. I think she's a nice little horse. I guess the question is, I don't know how good she is, and I wonder... I suppose you're going to still have the opportunity to see a forward move. She's only gone out eight times, but at the same time, some of these other girls, I think there's a potential anyway for a forward move. And if they do move forward, I think it hurts her. The other problem is I think there's a lot of speed in here, and she's going to have to deal with that early, too. Good segue for the time form U.S. pace projector Champagne Room when she won the Remington Park Oaks two starts back, was able to establish a clear and uncontested lead. The time form pace projector says not going to happen on Sunday. Champagne Room might have to deal with the stretch-out sprinter Constellation, whose first start for Bob Baffert didn't go very well. It was a disaster. She was basically walked off the racetrack, and, and I don't know what you want to do with that. For me, I thought she was mildly interesting at a long price going into that race and okay disaster but I mean how do you back a horse off of an effort like that and going a distance I don't think she wants any part of that to me is the major concern the good constellation and maybe she'll get good again she was not good last time out the good constellation we always had a lot of worries about anything more than seven yeah. furlongs and that's why after 13 starts, she's never raced in a route. Right. Baffert is throwing her here, maybe hoping that her speed will play and she can get to the lead and maybe uh, relax a bit. I, I just can't play her A off the form she's in and B at this distance. I mean, I suppose in, in a way, is it one of those instances where you, you look at it and I mean, does her value as a broodmare go up if she's graded stakes placed going two turns as well as a graded stakes winner, a grade one winner going shorter? I don't know. I, I just don't love her chances at all. We do have a positive Baffert formulator fact, and it's rare that you get a positive ROI on a Baffert formulator yeah. fact. Past five years, older runners making the second start off a layoff of 45 days or greater, stretching out in distance on dirt and graded stakes, 27%, a 234 return on investment. Let's talk about Erton's other runner in here because I was really torn. I wanted to make this horse my top pick. Eventually, I settled for her as my second choice. That's Pacific Wind, and we were fans of Pacific Wind earlier this year on the turf. You could argue that in the honeymoon, she would have been a lot closer if she didn't get jammed up down towards the inside. It looked like she went off form. She made her belated dirt debut most recently. I thought she looked pretty good, 93 buyer. A little bit workmanlike in the stretch, but she was coming off a layoff. I, I loved it. I thought it was a really good effort. She was in amongst horses yeah. in between. I thought that was a very professional move, especially off of a little bit of a layoff first time on a different surface. And then the way that she just got the job done. I know LaForce is an okay kind of horse, but I have to be honest with you, I never thought she was getting to her. Like you say, maybe it wasn't the most brilliant thing you've ever seen, but I thought it was well sort of within her, her range and within herself. I thought she did it very well, and I think she's going to get a very advantageous pace situation. She, she s does have that stalking ability to sort of settle yeah. into the second flight, and that can really be key. And perhaps most importantly, she got a fig yeah. that she had been lacking perhaps on the turf, on the dirt. Maybe she's found a home on this surface. The seven Shenandoah Queen I thought looked good, winning the Tranquility Lake at Del Mar two starts back. Now, that's the only fast race in her career, and the horse she beat faithfully is kind of disappointed yeah. in subsequent outings. I thought she'd run a lot better in the Chaluki last time out. She disappointed me a bit in that race. Maybe getting back to Southern California will wake her up. Yeah, maybe she needed a race, but I've got to be honest, to me, the, the one race that is the outlier is that Tranquility Lake. And like you say, you made mention that field, not only faithful, but you see Motown Lady. She didn't beat a good field. 
positive formulator fact for her as well, though, however. Let's take a look at Shenandoah Queens trainer John Sadler and how he does second off the layoff in graded stake dirt route races, 23% and a $2.69 ROI. It's a deep field because we still haven't talked about the three Majestic Heat. And Majestic Heat made the first 14 starts of her career on turf. She was always okay on the turf, multiple stakes winner. But last time out on the dirt, boy, she was really good sitting just off the pace in the Betty Grable, and this extra distance won't be a problem. Yeah, just off of a slow pace, and like you say, the distance not going to be any sort of a problem for her. I, d I do wonder, I mean, Los Alamitos can be a very quirky racetrack for any horse, let alone horses that are just kind of getting used to doing something different, but uh, I have no reason to think that she's not going to be able to run well here. You get Mike Smith aboard. She has a little bit of tactical speed, doesn't have to go to the lead, can sit just off. I mean, there's a lot of things that would be pointing you in a positive direction. Trainer Neil Drysdale had to see Peter Erton go and turf to dirt with Pacific Wind. Richard Mandela go and turf to dirt with Majestic Heat and says, I got to get on the bandwagon. The advantage that Mad Madame Stripes has is she's already raced a couple of times on dirt in her native Argentina. She has had some success. She has had some nice races on turf. I think she's more of a turf horse. Yeah, I agree with you. Uh, you know, worth noting that she's grade one place down there, but at the same time, ever since she's gotten here, I think she's done some good things. I think she's a turf horse. Has Street Surrender just completely gone off form? She won the Southern Truce. It was not a strong race in June at this distance, but she got a solid enough figure. It was odd, I thought, that they ran her in the Ocinitas off that race on the turf where she tired badly. Tranquility Lake, tired badly. Last time out, odd spot again, five yeah. furlong turf race in the Senator Ken Maddy didn't do much running. Maybe she's real forwardly placed down from the inside, and she's run well at Los Alamitos. I think she's going to be forwardly placed. She's run well at Los Alamitos. Hollandor for the past three years, turf to dirt, sprint route, four for ten with a 750 wow. ROI. So this is something he's done in the past. Uh, I think, if nothing else, if you don't like her, I think she can make life miserable up front because I think you've got to go from the inside. She has to go from the inside, and Champagne Room's going to show yep. some speed, and we know that the five is going to show some speed constellation, so it might set things up for a deep closer or a stalker. Bernina Starr might be at the tail end of this field when they go into the backstretch. I think it's not really an issue of the pace scenario. She'll get what she needs from a pace uh, standpoint. I just wonder if she's good enough. Yeah, and you know, the odd thing is you go through and look at her lifetime PPs. Early on, she was a speed ball. She yeah. was one-way speed, and all of a sudden, she's turned into an off-the-pace type. Look, if maybe things go completely crazy early on, maybe she can run. Fun race, to be sure. Let's sure. take a look at our picks for the grade two Bayako. You're going with the six specific win. What price do you need? Do you <sighs> think five to one is reasonable? Oh, absolutely. I don't think I get five, though. I kind of feel like she might be one of those wise guy kind of okay. horses where people look at it and say, only start on dirt fastest, last out buyer. She's going to need to improve from a time form standpoint, but I just think that the pace scenario in front of her should be perfect. Give me numbers. I'm going to go two. No, I'm sorry, 6213. I'm going to use both the Erton horses, the yeah. two and the six, in multiple race wagers because I really wanted to make a case for Pacific Wind. I might have made a mistake in not doing so. Champagne Room, though. I eventually, uh, I think that eventually she's going to let Street Surrender go. I think okay. she's going to let Constellation go. I think Mario's going to try to sit in third with her and finish. She has come from slightly off that, the yeah. pace in the past, and I think if she does that and runs her Breeders' Cup, she wins. Uh, the price is not going to be ideal, however. From a multiple race standpoint, I use 2-6. I go 2-6, 3-7 in the grade 2 by a Koa handicap. Let's look at that deal one more time because I don't know how you're going to beat it. Sign up quick yeah. because if you sign up for DRF bets before December the 3rd, You'll have an opportunity to access one full year of free past performances. All you have to do is wager $100 in your first 30 days. Find out more, drf.com forward slash one. Approximate post time for the grade two Bayacoa, race number eight at Los Alamitos on Sunday, 358 Pacific. Good luck.